This genius U.S. invention changed the B-52 Stratofortress forever. The B-52 Stratofortress is a long-range weighty bomber aircraft planned to execute versatile missions. It was built to support immense quantities of weapons and is now deemed to be a crucial part of the United States Strategic Bomber Force. Just recently, officials offered to equip the aircraft with an Ordinary Strategic Rotary Launcher, or CSRL. These launchers are multifaceted and designed to carry an extensive variety of weapons, located inside what is considered as bomb bay. Rotaries are modified to rotate the weapons mounted in the bomb bay. Current alterations to the B-52's rotary launcher design continued to construct the aircraft more pliable and fatal in combat environments, as the launcher can now support even more munitions than before. Even though improving the aircraft was not without effort, to transport a rotary launcher, teams must get the weighty launcher onto a trailer before a vehicle moves it to the planned plane. Once ready to load, weapons are armed onto the rotor. It can take around 11 hours to do. Eventually, once the bombs are loaded, the team utilizes the trailer to raise a common strategic rotary launcher into the bomb bay. Nonetheless, like any technological hardware, the rotary must also be examined and engineers must sometimes execute maintenance. Once the B-52 is formally ready for launch, the team may plan to launch the aircraft in a manner called a cart start. This launching method happens when a small controlled explosive cartridge is thrust into two of the B-52 engines as a kind of jumpstart for the generator. This enables the crew to become airborne in much less time than during a usual B-52 launch. Although these launches are routine operations, they are used in an infrequent manner. The B-52s, however, are not. The Stratofortress aircraft was originally constructed in the 50s and have now been around for more than 65 years. Throughout the years, technology of planes has been improved, but the primary components of the original B-52 still fly. Before, recent upgrades to the aircraft was what many regarded as a mismatch of digital and analog systems. The B-52 had originally contained analog intraphone panels that crews resorted to talk to one another and crews initially had to carry thumb drives of crucial information, such as maps, on and off the plane. Now, crew members can obtain digital transmissions in the air. But before crews can head into the air, they still must be fully trained. This can be done by the 93rd Bomb Squadron, the only B-52 formal training unit in the Air Force. The team is in charge of training the B-52 pilots and other operators for duty, including electronic warfare officers and weapon systems officers. Even if the students are graduated, they are still perfumed to perform training operations regularly to make certain of safety. These not only assist engineers to determine what pieces of equipment need repairing, but it also helps in making the actual operations quicker. When aircraft need to be prepared to go at a moment's notice, every time the crews must be ready to get in the field. While the B-52 is an essential part of the Air Force's strategic bomber force, the B-1B Lancer is deemed just as important of a role in the long-range bomber force. It can support about 120,000 pounds, including internal and external payload. Nonetheless, a large team is entailed to put together the bombs before they are stacked on the plane. Once officially created, the bombs are loaded by the 28th Bomb Wing, who are coached for loading and unloading munitions. The aviators use an array of equipment to transport the heavy bombs and carefully sight them on the aircraft. Once the aircraft is ready to ascend, crews may plan to use an afterburner. An extension of the rear engine, the afterburner provides the aircraft like the B-1B extra thrust for ascending and during the cruise. The thrust is initiated by mixing jet fuel with oxygen in the afterburner. The combustion is sent into the exhaust stream from the engine turbine. Once the Air Force has completely used aircraft for its whole lifespan, the B-1B Lancer is withdrawn from service in many instances. The planes are then taken into a museum where it is securely stored and allowed for the public to visit. Taking the aircraft to the museum entails a team of trained professionals to work on and move the B-1B to its final destination. Many distinct units and squadrons are in cooperation to make a successful trip to the museum. All parties operate together to make the transfer. 
identical procedures were in place for the B-17 Memphis Bell when it was transported to the World War II gallery at the National Museum of the United States Air Force in 2018. According to the Air Force, the airplane was the first ever hefty bomber to return to the U.S. after executing 25 missions in Europe. It was also the first bomber to be transported into a museum after being moved in 2005. Situated in Riverside, Ohio, the National Museum of the U.S. Air Force now accommodates more than 360 aerospace vehicles and missiles, exhibited for people of all ages to visit and peek through. The museum contains everything from aircraft to equipment and weapons.